hey folks guess what it never rains in Southern California so that's a lie because it does rain in Los Angeles I am here to tell you guys about a new product here uh, you guys know me I've been using jealous devil for a while it burns hot clean with little ash and has fantastic flavor and smoke ring so the folks at jealous devil introduce a new product here it's called the max extra large briquettes and that's how they look like they are a little bit larger than a regular briquette and uh, I've been uh, using them with great success we're gonna do a cook today for the uh, Chinese barbecue pork using our pit barrel cooker and uh, we're gonna show you guys how this new charcoal burns and what a great result that you can get out of it hey everybody it's Harry from step and daddy barbecue the YouTube channel that teaches you how to master barbecue so you can spread barbecue love I am doing a viewer request today because many of you have been asking me to do a Chinese barbecue pork recipe also called the char siu which is those red beautiful uh, hang pork that's hanging in a Chinese deli we're gonna get a pork butt here from Walmart we're gonna show you how to make the easy version with just three ingredients with some honey some hoisin sauce and a little bit of food coloring we're also gonna show you a traditional Cantonese recipe going back at least 2,000 years to compare a shootout between a traditional Cantonese char siu recipe against a simple three ingredient recipe for things you can buy from Walmart. I'm also going to cook this on a pit barrel cooker so we can hang the meat so that it has authentic kind of char marks on it. We're also going to be using a new charcoal from the folks at Jealous Devil. They made a new briquette version of their famous charcoal with peregrine axe wood. We're going to try it out tonight and show you guys the results. I have the 12 ingredients needed to make the traditional char siu sauce. Uh, some are familiar, some are not. So I'll kind of talk you through the different ingredients so that you get a little bit of sense of uh, the complexity of the flavors that go into this dish. The first one is of course honey. You're familiar with honey. This one is sesame oil, uh, which has a wonderful nutty flavor. We use a little bit of Chinese cooking wine and the common one that you see in Chinese cooking is called a Xiaoxing wine and uh, this uh, has a little bit of a brown color to it it's a great for cooking any kind of chinese food and if you don't have it uh, cooking sherry will be a good substitute this is a hoisin sauce which is found everywhere even including walmart it's made from toasted uh, fermented soybeans and it's got a wonderful wonderful umami flavor and uh, has a sweet almost like a plum like uh, flavor to it so it's great for to make barbecue sauces i even snuck this in some contest where i put a little bit of hoisin with my american barbecue sauce to give it a wonderful kind of plum fruity little flavor note to my barbecue sauce we have uh, this one called the uh, oyster sauce also very common across america you can buy it in their walmart uh, sam's club grocery stores um, by way of background this uh, was actually an accident so a gentleman by the name of mr lee his actual name is uh, lee kam ki in about 1888 in the guangdong province in china he was selling oysters and uh, he was cooking oysters in a pot he lost track of time and he actually ended up uh, overcooking the oysters by that time he noticed that he had made a kind of mistake the oysters that cooked down into a brown dark liquid and he tasted it and he found out wow this oyster extract sauce was absolutely amazing in flavor and that's how he invented the oyster sauce uh, and uh, mr lee his name is still on it going back to 1880 so his name is lee kam ki uh, he was the one who invented this sauce back in china next item here we have here is something that not so easily found but essentially is a riff of the japanese miso so this is a uh, kind of a chinese version of a fermented soybean kind of like miso paste but this comes in cubes this uh, component here is combined with uh, this component here which is a uh, red uh, uh, yeast uh, which is rice that has been seed has been uh, kind of uh, put into a mold and uh, the mold is actually something called uh, let's see here it's called uh, monascus uh, purpurus and uh, this mold is put onto the rice and it makes the rice kind of reddish and this was the form of color that people use in cooking foods like peking duck and uh, barbecue pork char siu going back over 2500 years more recently, uh, researchers have found out that this red rice 
uh, does contain some powerful medicinal chemicals. One of them is uh, called uh, lovastatin. So if you are taking a statin drug uh, called uh, lovastatin uh, or Mevacor, uh, you are basically going to be eating some of the chemicals found naturally in this uh, red rice. It gives a wonderful color and this red rice can be ground up. So I ground it up in a little um, spice grinder. And when this is added to the miso, it makes the miso, uh, the fermented tofu kind of red. So I got a little bit of liquid in here together with some of the miso paste, giving it a great umami flavor. Next item uh, is a bit of soy sauce. I have some white pepper and I have this uh, brown powder, which is called a, a five spice powder. Five spice powder is very common in Asian cuisine. It's comprised of some ground cinnamon, ground cloves, Szechuan peppercorn and star anise and a little bit of coriander. So about five spices ground in here. You can make your own, but it's it's too much trouble. Just go buy a bottle. The bottle's like two bucks. So save you a lot of time. And I had a couple of aromatics here. We had a ginger and a little bit of garlic. So these 12 ingredients will go into making the marinade. We'll uh, cut up the pork butt and soak it overnight and make some wonderful traditional Cantonese style char siu with a recipe going back 2000 years. Let's go ahead and mix our 12 ingredients. I'm going to put about a quarter cup of uh, Shaoxing wine. A little bit of uh, the uh, hoisin sauce. Probably about two tablespoons. About one or two tablespoons of the oyster sauce. Uh, the number of ingredients doesn't really matter because uh, the way we cook is we cook MMA style where we can use any technique we want. We're going to taste the final product to get it to the right level of saltiness. So for those of you who have been following me on my cooking channel, you know I cook like a kind of a applied Brazilian Jiu Jitsu with Taekwondo, with kickboxing and wrestling. Uh, we're going to create a, a very salty and sweet mixture. I'm going to guess about maybe about, I don't know, uh, maybe th th three or four tablespoons of honey. Add our uh, the uh, fermented tofu here, fermented uh, soybean with the red uh, yeast in it to make the color of char siu red. Just a touch of some of the uh, red yeast powder that I ground up to give it a natural coloring. Uh, in some char siu places, they use actually uh, red coloring, which is what we're going to use in the Walmart version with the three ingredients. A little bit of soy, probably about one. Two tablespoons of soy sauce, one teaspoon of uh, white pepper, about one tablespoon of five spice powder. I like five spice powder because it's got a good flavor. If you don't like five spice powder, you see the mini flavor meat, don't put so much. Of course, put garlic. If you like garlic, garlic is good. And a little bit of uh, ginger and garlic. That's the two last ingredients. Kind of mix it up. We're going to do a taste test. See, we can adjust the flavors. Remember I taught you guys when you cook food, always taste, taste, taste uh, the marinade. This marinade is safe to taste because uh, there's nothing in it that's uh, kind of raw. A lot of these ingredients are safe to taste. If you have an ingredient that has a kind of uncooked product, in like meat products, uh, please do not taste the, the, uh, the sauce or the marinade. Always make sure that you uh, check for safety beforehand. I'm gonna mix this up now and give it a taste test here. Mm, mm. All right, needs a little bit more sweet. I'm gonna add a little bit more honey to it. So it's gotta be a sweet, savory flavor. A bit more honey to it. It's a touch more white pepper. So maybe two tablespoons, two teaspoon. It's nice, nice peppery flavor. A little bit more soy for salt. And it's lacking the the peanutty, the nutty flavor of a little bit of uh, sesame, the like more sesame. Taste. It's gonna be pretty salty because uh, we're gonna marinate the meat. Uh, if you're gonna be leaving it overnight, try not to make the marinade too salty. But I'm gonna be marinating it just for a couple of hours so I can make it quite salty here. Yep, salty has the beautiful flavor of the fermented bean curd. It's got a right amount of sweetness, not too sweet, because uh, I don't want the meat to burn because I'm gonna brush on a uh, honey maltose glaze on it to make it sweet when we are gonna cook it on the pit. So this will work. 
uh, I'm gonna set it aside and prep my pork butt and I'll show you guys the uh, the other version the simple Walmart version next for my super simple three ingredient uh, barbecue pork uh, we, we are gonna use uh, some of the hoisin sauce I've got some in here already I'll start off with about probably maybe three quarter cup of hoisin like so gonna add uh, honey to it I uh, add a little bit of water to the honey so I can kind of microwave it, get a little bit of the honey at the bottom out. We also need a little bit of liquid to dilute the sauce we're making here. A little bit more honey. You want to get the same kind of level of saltiness and uh, sweetness that we made with the original 2000 year old recipe. Taste test. Salty and has a kind of a, like a plum flavor to it. The hoisin tastes really good. So we have the honey and we have the hoisin as the base. Now this is an optional item here. You can use uh, a little bit of food coloring, maybe a few drops of food coloring. If you don't like to use food coloring, uh, you can use this product here. This is a organic red beet powder, which will fulfill about the same purpose as the red yeast that we did earlier. Uh, this is probably available in a food store like a Sprouts or a uh, Whole Foods, right? Uh, if you don't want to use this or you don't have this, the other option is uh, you can go to the Asian store and buy some an anato. This is also used in uh, Hispanic style Mexican cooking, a little bit of achuete. Achuete powder will also make it red, but we're gonna do a simple recipe here. I'm just going to put a couple of drops of the uh, red coloring to give it a nice red color. You notice I'm wearing gloves because uh, this red stuff will get everywhere. Once you touch your hand, the skin's going to be stained red. So I just uh, put some here and you can see already the red stain is happening even on a glass bowl. Uh, it will give the char siu its characteristic red color. You can do it the natural way by using the red yeast. You can use uh, a little bit of uh, a choite, or you can use beet powder. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but I think that the char siu characteristic is that wonderful red color that makes it so wonderfully delicious. And uh, when you grow up in Asia, eating uh, char siu is almost like something that you do daily. It's like eating kind of French fries or having a hamburger. So this is ready to go. And uh, we're gonna now debone the pork butt. I'll show you guys how to get the nice, beautiful, perfect slices of the right amount of fat and the right amount of meat to marinate our char siu or Chinese barbecue pork two ways, the Walmart way and we're doing the traditional way using uh, the 12 ingredient recipe followed by the three ingredient recipe. Let's prepare our Walmart butt roast here. Uh, just take it out of the packaging here. Before I start, I want to kind of acknowledge uh, the nice folks at uh, Dell Strong. The folks at Dell Strong were kind enough to send me a set of their uh, uh, Shogun series uh, knives. This is a beautiful 7 inch Santuku and uh, it's super sharp, super well balanced. A Damascus blade. Uh, it's been a, just a wonderful tool to be using in the kitchen. Now, I'm going to leave a link in the description below if you're interested in trying out the Dell Strong line of knives. They have some really fantastic knives here. Take a pork butt out. And the way the typical pork butt is handled is uh, we usually need to kind of cut away a little bit of fat and then cut it into slices. The best char siu is done using a uh, pork butt. That's where all the flavor is. And uh, you can uh, get a little bit of the fatty parts and the lean parts all in one bite, which was makes it wonderful. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slice off some of the fat here. It's a super sharp knife. I'm gonna cut out the uh, shoulder blade bone from the meat here. A little bit of fat is okay, but for char siu, usually uh, it's a combination of the lean and the fatty meats that makes char siu so absolutely wonderful. As I mentioned earlier, char siu is put on many different things uh, as toppings. You can put it on rice, put it on noodles, and uh, 
wonton noodle is never complete without some of this char siu right on top, topping it. Also, fra fried rice, uh, wonderful to cut into little cubes and uh, use for fried rice. Well, the next thing we want to do is uh, we want to remove the bone, switch to a slicer. You can run your knife through the bone here. So, the scapula is right here. So, you want to run your knife into the area of the scapula here. Lifting the bone slow. lips clean like that okay so that's the bone you can use for soup stock it's all good okay so now I have the boneless pork butt and uh, we're gonna cut it into strips going this way so if you're looking at the pork butt this way we're gonna make some parallel cuts so about uh, maybe an inch an inch and a quarter I'm gonna get about four pieces from this piece here. Cut it right down the middle first. Just to be clear, uh, the bone was sticking out on the back here, right? And then the pectoralis profundi is right here, the money muscle. So we're cutting kind of lengthwise on the pork butt. So you've seen many of my pork butt videos where I explain to you how to cook competition pork butt. And the pectoralis profundi is the muscle that we usually turn in for competition. I'll show it to you here. So this is the pectoralis profundi right here. Okay, so this, this piece here. And then cut another piece here. So we're gonna get four pieces from this uh, eight pound butt. And you can buy boneless butt if you don't wanna have to deal with this, uh, you know, seasoning it. So here's one good piece. So you got four beautiful pieces here. Trim this one a little bit. And this one for soup stock. Okay, so one, two, three, four. We're gonna soak in the marinade and let it get happy before we cook it. Put a couple of pieces into the uh, 12 ingredient version here. You can poke holes also in the pork butt if you want. Uh, that also is an optional step. All right, everybody in the pool. Same on this one here with the uh, three ingredient Walmart with the uh, red coloring, also very good recipe, super simple. But also you don't want to go to too much trouble, this also works. And be very, very careful once you have the red coloring, it stains everything. So wear gloves if you need to, because uh, it's going to make one hell of a mess in the kitchen. And whatever you do, do not drop it on the floor. And don't ask me how I know, because once you get on the floor, it's almost impossible to get it off. All right, let it marinate and um, you want to flip it at least once. I'm going to make some steamed jasmine rice to go with the uh, Chinese barbecue pork or char siu. I just want to show you guys a little tip. Uh, in uh, most uh, Asian homes, they, we use a rice cooker to cook rice. And I just finished washing the rice and rinsed it a couple of times so I can get the starch out. The Chinese style of cooking rice is uh, really do not have a starchy type of rice. That's why jasmine rice is popular. In the Japanese tradition, they like uh, kind of a short grain, sticky kind of rice. And the uh, Italians like a, like a risotto kind of short grain rice that uh, they preserve the starch to make the rice stick together. But in uh, Chinese cuisine, I just want to point out, for those of you who are following me, is you really need to clean the rice so that the individual grains are all separated and we are going to be using a long grain jasmine rice. Here's a big uh, tip that uh, I can show you guys, a little trick. Uh, when you measure the amount of water in the rice, you typically want to have about a 2 to 1 ratio. So 2 parts of water to 1 part of rice. The way you want to do that is you take your finger and you dip this finger in like that. You put one finger where the rice level is, so you touch the rice level. You put the second finger where the water level is, you lift it up and then you look at your hand. If you have an equidistance right, between the two, like so, here versus here, then you know that you have uh, 
two parts of water to one part of rice. So this is the technique which we use. Let me repeat it, show it what to you one more time because uh, a lot of people don't know this, but in every Asian household, we all know this, but it's not common common knowledge. So you take the, the, the kind of the middle finger here, you stick in the rice. So you put your finger to touch the bottom rice. You put your thumb where the water level is, you lift it up. And if it's about half and half, you have the right amount of water rice level here water level here so the water level is two to one that's how you get perfectly cooked steamed rice before you put in rice cooker so just a little tip thought i'd pass it on to you guys because uh most asian people know how to do that but in case you have never learned this is a rice cooker uh, super simple plug it in and uh just uh turn it on so plug it in here and press the button and you're ready to go for most Asian households, uh, this is the brand we buy. It's called the Juroshi. This my rice cooker must be at least about 15, 20 years old. These last forever. They cost a little bit of money, maybe about uh, I don't know, hundred twenty dollars or so. But buy a good one, buy a big one, and uh, you're ready to go. This will last you, you know, a couple of uh, decades at least. So uh, you press it down, one button, and it's ready to cook. All set to go. We have what gonna have wonderful jasmine rice in about uh, 10, 15 minutes. All right, we have our coals ready to go. I'm gonna open up the vent. Get it around 400 degrees. Nice and roasting. The lid on. We're gonna make the uh, barbecue pork glaze, char siu glaze, which is a combination of a little bit of uh, Shaoxing wine, a little bit of uh, maltose, which is kind of like a candy. Uh, the way you want to use this is you want to warm it on microwave so that it becomes a little bit softer when you buy it kind of rock hard. Just microwave in 20 second increments, really nice and soft. Okay, it's got a liquid form like this. Put some of uh, that liquid gold in a uh, saucepan. Probably maybe about uh, maybe about half the quarter cup. Just enough to make a glaze. A little bit of honey. So it'll be a cooking wine, shaoxing wine. You want a nice uh, sticky glaze. The reddish color to it. I paint this on the uh, chashu. With a nice, beautiful reddish sheen, characteristic of the uh, barbecue pork that you see hanging in the Chinese deli together with the Peking duck. Also, roast pork. I'll eventually get around to making showing you guys how to make a, the crispy skin roast pork. That is a companion to the Barbecue pork, just running on low sweet milk, keep it warm.
absolutely gorgeous and uh, you can see that the one with the dye has a nicer red color compared to this one which is the uh, 2000 year old recipe or inspired recipe one that's done with three ingredients. The one on the left is the uh, 12 ingredient char siu or Chinese barbecue pork. And uh, I have to admit the, um, the three ingredient one, I think it looks prettier. The red dye really helps give it a nice color. Uh, this one's pretty good too, uh, but I, I would give the edge on the color to the one on the right. I'm not sure if my camera is giving you a good color, but uh, I think appearance wise, the uh, one on the right looks better so that's just my opinion let's uh, move on to the taste test to see which one tastes better so uh, before we eat let me just recap what we did we did uh, two recipes today one using a uh, recipe goes back to thousand year tradition using about 12 ingredients really authentic cantonese style on this one i did the quick walmart recipe with just three ingredients which was the honey a little bit of red food coloring and uh, hoisin sauce this one had a lot of ingredients the final appearance that we did um, was that I think this looks better. The, the red dye or red food coloring does help. This one looks more natural. So let's just take a bite from each one and give you guys an opi opinion on the taste followed by the tenderness. Let me try the, this one first. Let me pick a good one. It's the three ingredient Walmart version of the uh, Chinese barbecue pork. Very good. Uh, just a light hint of smoke. Saltiness is about right. A nice sweet glaze on the top. Overall, really, really good homemade barbecue pork or char siu. We need this one here now. It's the one with the uh, 12 ingredient recipe. A nice moist one. So look at that. Also a little bit of a smoke ring. This one has a much more complex flavor. And uh, you can taste uh, the layers and layers of these uh, fragrant ingredients that have come to meld together. I taste a little bit of the five spice, which has hints of coriander, hints of star anise, uh, hints of uh, cinnamon, a little bit of a garlicky, slight ginger aftertaste. Uh, also has that kind of a sweetness from the, uh, I guess the umaminess of the fermented tofu. There's two kinds of fermented tofu in here. One was from the hoisin, the other one was from the red, uh, what do you call the red yeast rice ground up uh, uh, miso or fermented tofu very very good flavor much more complex than this one if i were to describe the flavor this is, would be like a i guess uh, like a tuxedo this would be kind of a jeans and a tank top uh, that's kind of how the flavor is this one is is really uh, much more tender more complex flavor very enjoyable char siu and then this would would really serve you well if you could make it you know following this recipe this version is kind of like jeans and t-shirt version with just three ingredients from Walmart. I have to say, you know, it's quite impressive. Let me do another bite, a uh, second, second, go around and get a finalize my impression. Beautiful char, look at it, glistening all over. All right, eating a second round confirmed my uh, kind of findings. This is like the tuxedo, very classy evening gown version. This is more jeans and shorts and t-shirt version. Uh, both are very good. Uh, if you want to try this recipe at home, it is just a simple recipe with just three ingredients. And this is the complex one with 12 ingredients. So I know the $50 question is, Harry, given the amount of work that you have to go through to do the traditional recipe compared to the simple Walmart recipe, uh, how would this rate? So if I had to judge this, if this was a scale 1 to 10, 10 being excellent, this would rank a 10. This is actually not far behind. Uh, you know, I have to say that, that this will reach about I don't know, maybe 60, 65% of this. So I would say this would be a, like a seven if this is a 10. So both are very good eating. If you don't eat it side by side, it's really hard to tell. Uh, once you put this on top of rice, you put it on top of noodles, put it on top of your wonton, uh, it's gonna be kind of hard to tell. Both look absolutely fantastic. This one, just the flavor is just very complex, very deep, very exotic. And this one is still very good eating. Uh, it tastes just like char siu. So, uh, I hope you like this episode. I'm going to go plate up my uh, dish now so that you look good for the final money shot. And then uh, we'll make sure Mr. Beans has been uh, jumping on my chair. We'll make, make, give him a little bit of both and see what my uh, barbecue judge dog would like best. 
Okay, beans, you ready for to try? That's the uh, 12 ingredient one beans, and that is the three ingredient one, right? All right, go ahead, go. All right, he's sniffing it. Wow, see, this dog knows what to do. He went straight for the complex 12 ingredient barbecue pork. Now he's feeling his way. He's tasting the other one, and he's saying, where is my brisket? <laughs> Here's the final meal prep. I've uh, put it into microwavable containers. You can see from the beautiful char that the uh, Max uh, briquette charcoal works really well from Jealous Devil. The uh, beautiful color and smoke ring comes from the uh, briquettes. It's made of a uh, Paraguayan axe wood and it's very similar to the uh, Jealous Devil charcoal except this one is a compressed into briquettes. Absolutely gorgeous meat here and super easy to use. I found that it was very hot, it burned up to a thousand degrees, it burns for a long long time so it's really really a wonderful charcoal. If you want to try that as a briquette, uh, give it a shot and let me know what you guys think. And leave it in the comment section below if you ever have a chance to try the Max uh, Jealous Devil briquettes.